All right, everybody, welcome back. Let's go ahead and talk 5.2 exponential functions and their graphs. So um, an exponential function is going to be in the form f of x equals a to the x power. a is going to be a positive number, so it's going to be bigger than 0, and a is not going to equal 1. So that's going to be our exponential function, so the variable is going to be up as an exponent. So let's go ahead and graph um, f of x equals 2 to the x. I'm going to make a table of values. I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if I take f of x and I'm going to plug in negative 2, that's going to be 2 to the negative 2 power. Whenever we have a negative exponent, we flip that number, take the reciprocal, and make it a positive exponent. So this becomes 1 fourth. So when I put in a negative 2, I get out a 1 fourth. When I put in a negative 1, I get out a 1 half. When I put in 0, I get out 1. When I put in 1, I get out 2. And when I put in 2, I get out 4. If you need to write some more test those values, use your calculator, please feel free. Then let's just go ahead and plot those. So on my x-axis, I need negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. My y-axis is going up to 4. And we'll just plot those points. Negative 2, a quarter. It's going to be super tiny. Negative 1 and a half. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 2 and 2, 4. So this is going to be the exponential function 2 to the x power. It grows slow and then it goes really, really fast. It will never cross the x-axis, but it will get very, very close. So we're going to have um, it reaching towards the x-axis, but never, ever crossing over. All right, let's go ahead and graph this next one, 1 half to the x power. Again, I'm going to go ahead and make that same table of values. Okay, so if I put 1 half and I raise him to the negative 2 power, again, we're going to take that reciprocal, so 1 half flipped becomes 2, and then I get a positive exponent, so this one is 4. Then I'm going to get a 2, a 1, a 1 half, and a 1 fourth. And again, if you need to write that out, please feel free. All right, graphing this one. So at negative 2, we're all the way up at 4. Negative 1, we're up at 2. 0 at 1. 1's at a half. And 2's at a quarter. So this is a decreasing exponential function. Again, it will never, ever cross that x-axis. Starts super, super high and then um, comes down. All right, properties of exponential functions. So we already talked about this one. f of x is equal to a to the x power, where a is positive and it's not equal to 1. Exponential functions are continuous. They are one-to-one -one functions. So remember from last class we talked about being one-to-one -one. graphically. That means you pass that horizontal line test and when you look at those exponentials you can see that that does. The domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range goes from 0 to infinity not including 0. Your graph will be an increasing exponential if a is bigger than 1. So we saw 2 to the x power. We saw that that was increasing. And it will be decreasing if a is in between 0 and 1. So if we have a fraction like a half or a quarter, um, then that will be a decreasing exponential. It has a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And the y-intercept is 0. Those are properties of our um, parent exponential function. You want, when you flip to the back, I'm actually not going to do any of these, but I'd love for you guys to um, take a look at them and fill some of it out. So this is talking about transformations, and I want to see how well you remember them. So on this first one here, f of x equals 2 raised to the x minus 2, there's one thing happening, up, down, left, right, stretch, shrink, flip. One of those things is happening. If you want to just go ahead and bullet that and write what's happening, bring that back to class. That would be awesome. On this second one, example B, there's also one thing happening. 
And then on this third example, C, there are two things happening. So if you want to try to list what both of those are, and it's okay if you're wrong, we'll talk about them in class. And just give yourself a chance to think about those. All right, let's get into some word problems. So compound interest, I gave you the formula for compound interest right here. So keep that handy. You're going to know your compound interest if it says that you are compounded. Okay, if it says you're compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, then you know you have to use this equation. So looking at this first example, suppose that $100,000 is invested at 6.5% interest, compounded semi-annually. So this $100,000 is my principal. It's how much I put in. My rate is that percent. And then this N value is how often you're compounded. And all of that is listed up here for what P is and R and N and T. So reference that if you need it. So I know that P is $100,000. My rate as a decimal, take that decimal point two spots to the left, so 0 0.065. My N is going to be 2 because semi-annually happens twice a year. If it were quarterly, it would be 4. If it were um, annually, 1, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and write an equation to model this. So A of T, because T we don't know, is going to equal my principal times 1 plus my rate, which was 0 0.065, divided by 2 raised to the 2T power. That's just the equation. Now, find the amount of money in the account at time 0, 4, 8, and 10 years. If you want to remember how to do that bars in your calculator, I'll show you again in class. Um, but if you want to try that at home and just practice and see if you can remember how to do that bars, that would be awesome. But again, I'll fill that guy out in class. I'm just going to start it so I remember to talk about it. And then we're not going to graph this function. The numbers are super, super large. Um, but we're not going to graph it. Okay. Let's talk about the number e. So the number e is similar to pi, and not in the sense of how it's found. It's not similar, but in the sense that it's like a variable, but it represents a number. So we all know pi is 3.14. Well, e is approximately 2.7. So that's what I mean in the sense that it's similar. You do have a button on your calculator, that's an E button. So if you want to try to find that, you're going to take E and you're going to cube it. I'm just going to let you know that it's 20.0855. So see if you can get these answers by using your graphing calculator and pressing that E button. If you can't find it or are not getting these, please bring those to class and I'll show you how to do that. Um, in this last example that I'm going to do with you guys, graphing E to the X and E to the negative X. Well, e to the x, remember, this is about, it's about 2.7 to the x. So it should look pretty darn similar to when we graph 2 to the x. So it's going to be an increasing exponential function. The y-intercept is going to be at 0, 1 still. Still increasing, still not crossing that x-axis. For e to the negative x, remember, negative exponents, we can take the reciprocal and then make it a positive exponent. So we know it's going to be 1 over e to the x. Well, that's going to be a decreasing exponential. Again, has a y-intercept at 0, 1. So that's still about 2.7, pretty darn close to 1 half, um, just like we were graphing. So very back here, last page. Again, if you want to list these transformations, there's 1 on this first one. There's 2 on this second one. And there are two on that third one. So if you guys want to take a try at those, and again, I'll go over them in class and graph them with you. Um, it would be awesome if you took a moment to think about those. All right, thanks, guys.